this time on Highway Through Hell. Oh, the smokes. In deep. To the right, to the right. MSA. Oh, I can't. They just huh? Flex. Unbelievable. All their muscle. Oh. Jamie. Wow, this wind is something else. Goes sub zero. Oh. No oh way. And it's David versus Goliath. Keep going. Ah, they get massive. At the shipyard. Hey, hold up. Early winter. Be careful up there. High on British Columbia's Coquihalla Highway. Born on the dead sideways. A recent storm has claimed another victim. Drivers okay? Yeah, ten fire drivers okay. Arriving on scene. Rolling up in the moose. In their new 35 ton heavy wrecker, they call Moose. It's a little ways off the highway. MSA's Gersharn, or G. Van Weight. It's pretty exciting. It's our first time we got the moose up on the mountain. Really looking forward to it. And right beside him, his father, Kerpal. <laughs> That's unbelievable. And the truck is 20 feet into the ditch. Oh, it smokes. You're not going to get too much of a downward pull to us. Pretty level with the road. The truck and trailer sitting lower, almost level with the road. Not fun. Looks like it's a simple job, but it's very tough. That one's going to be a hard one. On the Coquihalla Highway, Team MSA face a rollover, lying below road level. The truck and trailer is sitting a lot lower than we anticipated. Because the angle is almost straight, we're worried it's not going to have a downward pull. Instead, it'll drag it sideways. Heading southbound, the loaded semi lost control, barreling off the road and into the ditch. Try to keep it flat as possible. Hours earlier, tipped over load of bulk salt. 45,000 pounds of cargo one. was offloaded. I should do it. Another tow truck. Big one. Now. There they are. Arriving in MSA's 50 ton record. Get her going, boys. Our G's brothers. All our muscle is here. We're ready to go to work. Gersimran, or Sim. Yo. This is the first time working up on the highway doing a wreck like this. And Gurkirat, or Gurk. You really put her in the ditch. We're gonna have a lot of fun taking this one out. What I'm thinking is we'll put the side puller to the front axle, low line, a low line to the axle number two, yeah. and a high line to the trailer. Yeah, we can do that. G steps up with a plan. And then with the other truck, same thing, high line and a low line. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Should I grab those straps then? Yeah, that's fine. On a job far from home. I'm digging this area to run the straps under. It's all hands on deck. I'm almost there. Ooh. 
but with the wreck over 20 feet off the pavement and well below road level, rigging will be key. It's a little bit further down from the road. We have to stand it up right where it is. Will it fit or do we need to lift first? Should fit. With a pair of high lines linked to straps and three low lines to the axles, they'll flip the semi onto its wheels. All right, boys. We cross the lines for two reasons. One, it takes less space up on the roadway. Here. And more importantly, it allows us to make sure that there's more structural integrity to the trailer's sidewall as it's coming up. Guide it up. Pretty much think of a big hand just lifting it up. With G on the controls of the new 35 ton. See what happens. And Sim on the 50 ton. Go. Kerpal. Coordinates. Okay, now we send low line. Go, 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 go. Rolling over the 70 foot wreck. Oh, guys, more pressure on the high line. Both high lines. Both high lines. From up on the road. We're practically in level with the tires that we're trying to pull down. Then go high line. Top. Yeah. I am putting the pressure on the wheel. If everything is the way it should be, then you start going up and up. Both high lines. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Tight pull a little bit. Ah, uh, she's good. There she is. Good. Bingo! <laughs> That's how she's done. But the job. It has to come up and all this uh, right here, where all this yeah. is a mess. Is only getting started. Pulling it up and over the bank is going to be the more challenging part. Holy. Seventy kilometers southwest. What's happening, Highway One? In the Fraser Valley. Oh wow, that sucks. A jackknifed semi in the Hammer Lane. Lane blocked off. Has traffic on the Trans Canada Highway down to one lane. Don't know how bad she is. Arriving on scene in a 35-ton heavy. Hopefully I can get her. Aggressive Towing's junior operator, Jaden Dick. Carnage. He's bounced down the no post and then jackknifed around. Driver's OK. This is definitely more than I was expecting to see on this call. We got parts all over the place. It's messed up pretty good. Working solo, Jaden quickly rigs up to the fully loaded semi. Hooking on to the truck. We can straighten it out. Just the rainy lane is open. But required to stay in the hammer lane. Not too sure how this is going to work out. His options are limited. Makes it a little harder positioning the truck to a spot where we can pull. From straight ahead, Jaden attempts a pull. But the 40 ton rig refuses to budge. She's perfect. To get the angle his 35 ton needs, he'll have to stop traffic. Highway 1 is a major highway into the lower mainland. 
can't have something like that closed for a long time. Um, I don't know how I'm going to do it. Sure did go off the road. Two and a half hours northeast. On the coke. That's a bad day when that happened. A wreck deep in the ditch. MSA, if I look to this. As Team MSA far from home. We're used to a lot of rain. It's a little bit of a different element. The moose. Oh. With their new 35 ton. So we have the right equipment now to do the job. Today's recovery is being kept in the family. You tell us when, Kerpal. For past recoveries. Watch out, guys. OK. MSA has partnered with fellow tow companies. That's it. To get the big jobs done. We need help, then we have to call someone else. <laughs> it's a pretty cool truck. Today, having two heavies of their own is a game changer. We don't have to ask for help. We have the machinery to support the business. But getting the 70-foot unit up to the road presents a new challenge. The grade of the ditch and the shoulder is going to be definitely working against us. If we are going that way, it's more slope there than here. Kerpal sees a way out. We are going to just winch it backward the way it came in. I hope it will work. We should put the airline onto the tank. But to ease the pull. For the brakes? They need the wheels to roll. It's important for us to air up the truck and trailer so we can release the brakes. Sim connects an airline to the tractor. See how much brake application you have. It's not airing up, dude. Nothing. Nothing, nothing. That should air it up. As long as the brakes are applied, the tires are not going to turn. That big truck went off the road. High on the Coquihalla. See how much brake application you have. An unknown air leak. Nothing. Nothing, nothing has put the brakes on MSA's ditch recovery. What do you figure, bro? We are charging up the air system, but there is an air leak somewhere. Should I try to go to the tank? Yeah, try it. Sim must search by feel. Hold on. To find the leak. Oh, here's the problem. Found the problem? Yeah. The drain valve on the tank pressed open, and that's just dumping all the air. Yeah, the valve's closed now. Gangster. What was it? Mud flap was pushed up against the fitting. Let's see if it works now. The air's coming up now. There's no air leaking. That was a quick, easy fix. I'm very happy. This is good. So once it's full, we'll be able to release the trailer's brakes. We are only halfway now. And this is not the hard part, getting the wreck onto the road. That will be the challenge. Still not out of trouble. Two and a half hours southwest. We need big backup. On Highway 1. Traffic's moving through there slowly, slowly. Jaden can't get the pole angle he needs. I don't want to close this lane. Without blocking the only open lane for traffic. I'm trying to get this truck straightened out with one person. There's a lot going on. 
I can't get over far enough to pull the trailer over. Jaden reaches out for help. I'd like to do it by myself, but definitely would be nice to have some backup. Answering the call, aggressive's 50-ton rotator. Yeah, all right. And heavy operator Chris Mervin. You know, when Jaden asks for help, you know he's pretty much got to the end of his candle there. You can head out there and give him a hand. It gets things opened up faster. Oh, yeah. You can put her in there. Another wrecker. That's good. Here! With Merv now on sight. We got to get something in there, buddy. Team Teal gets to work. Even a half inch single hook, if you can get it around, let's get it around. I'll get my cable. Yeah. That's nice having Merv on scene. He's very experienced. We just got to get it to spin a bit, Jaden, so. With the tractor dug into the shoulder. Right around. Does it fit? They're counting on the rotator's 50,000 pounds of winching power to give them a fighting chance. There's going to be a little bit of a tug to get it out for sure. OK. Watch yourself. The rotator is able to swing its boom 360 degrees. Hopefully, we can get it out quick. But straightening the wreck. Holy Hannah, eh? reveals massive damage. This tractor ripped every air tank, fuel tank, and drive shaft out of it. We'll pick it up by its front hooks. We'll get everything out from underneath it. But we don't want sharp, jagged metal edges sticking out and dragging down the highway. Let's get as much off as we can. That's good, Jaden. We might be able to get it right to you here. Merv. Uses his rotating boom for an unusual hookup. Okay. Onto the back of the 35 ton. I love my truck. Jane, run an airline. Having Murph here, I get the chance to see how he handles a situation like this. With the mangled wreck ready to roll. You're going to idle down there, and you're going to get off at the exit. Jaden will tow it to the nearest pullout. Murph's always got the answer. He's done it all, been there. Jaden did well. Instead of blocking all lanes of traffic, he made the choice to call for some help. Completely open now. No one's good. Good job, guys. What's going on up here? Uh, truck recovery. On the Coquihalla. OK, well, both brakes are at least. An aired up big rig. Let's get hooked up to the back. Is finally ready to roll. It's an easier pull for us, less resistance. Get it rigged up. But they must still find a way to get the unit up the seven foot bank of deep snow. <laughs> Get two lines on it, pull it back and straight out. Lift the chain up. With lines rigged to the rear. Tell Dad to pull it. They'll use their 50 ton to pull the semi. Yeah, yeah, just look. Back the way it came in. Give her. It's coming, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just go, keep pulling. Dad, stop for a sec. As the first wheels crest the road. Just move ahead now. They run out of room. Just freewheel and drive forward now? Yeah. To get the space they need. She has traffic stopped over there. Yeah. All southbound lanes must be shut down. We have to close the highway. Then we are going to winch it out onto the road. Back, catch low. 
They have a 15 minute window. Yeah. To get it done. But the 35,000 pound rig puts up a fight. Given that it's sitting on snow, there's definitely more resistance to the pull. Keep coming, keep coming. The trailer hanging up on the bank does make it that much more challenging for us to pull this wreck out. Snow's hot. Hot. Oh, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. They got the road blocked here. It's backing up quite a ways. On a rare mountain recovery. Coke still closed. Team MSA's wreck whoa, whoa, whoa. is stuck in the grip of a roadside snowbank. <laughs> Hours ago, the semi lost control, landing in a ditch. Now, is all snow is almost four or five feet. So it will be harder on the truck to drag it. To reduce resistance. Jump in there and steer. Kerpal's youngest son, Gert, gets behind the wheel. To the right, to the right. To straighten things out. The truck there will not track right. To get the steering wheel straight, it's a very crucial part of getting this tractor trailer winched out of the ditch. I can't. Without proper steering. I can't. What? The wheel keeps turning to the left. I can't hold it. It's just packed. Snow's packed. Girk needs to move more than 200 pounds <laughs> by hand. I love working out, love fitness. But I'm having a hard time. Turn the wheel. He can't. Yeah, you know, if I had a second person helping me do this, we'd be able to turn it. All right. G jumps in to give his brother a hand. Our window for time is closing on us. We just have to muscle it out. It's going to the right. It's going. I feel great about my sons working together. And he worked. I can feel my tractor sliding now. Keep going straight, keep going straight. Oh, yeah. Put her down. Just as the trailer reaches the road, their 15 minute window to stop traffic. Oh, Runs out. What's him run? Unhook the truck, let the traffic go. Boom down. They are sitting on the highway, not going anywhere. I can see their frustration. It's open now. The wreck is only halfway up. Let me know when I'm good to turn around. The steep seven foot bank. The plan is the 50 ton is going to pull from the back with both winches and the 35 ton will be holding it in place. But to position the new 35 ton. Anybody know what's going on? They'll need to close the highway again. Yo, they're holding it. You can start turning around. We have to stop the traffic. We have no choice. Give her. In position. Here. Just go right back here. They quickly rig up. Yeah, use the both. Yeah, that's a good idea. Go, pull it in. Let's see what the four of us are capable of with. Two of our most powerful wreckers. Go, turn to the right. Paul makes a final tweak. Go straight. Bust. Tighten it up. 
and the pull begins. Keep pulling. Both of MSA's heavies pull, 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 pull. are now in play. Oh. But the incline no, no. is pulling the trailer. Oh, you're going that way. You're going that way. Back in the ditch. It's a pretty steep embankment. The trailer kind of wants to tip over. Go, 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 go. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. On a mountain job. Whoa. A 35,000 pound semi Whoa. is on the edge. Hey, Dad. When I'm pulling it, it's picking the trailer like it's going over. Like, watch, watch. As I see it coming up, it's starting to tip back over. Look. But veteran operator Kerpal Lower the boom, lower the boom. Yeah, it's coming. Keeps his cool under pressure. Oh, yeah. Watch for the back. To work with my dad, it's always a learning experience. I got about 10 more feet back here. OK, hold on now. Stop, stop, hold send, on, stop, send, stop, send, stop. Let's unhook the trailer. Clear of the bank. Unlock the trailer here, just pull the trailer back, then we can pull the truck this way. Kerpal proposes an unconventional move. Unhook the trailer? Yeah, unhook. Disconnecting the tractor before it's fully on the road. It's much easier to doing this way. The trailer is unhooked. And also, it's way faster. Go, 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 go. The separated trailer. Pull your side over now. Go. Is safely back on pavement. Very good. That's good. That's good. And the team reopens the highway. No, oh, we're moving here again. As the recovery hits the five-hour mark. Yeah, right there. The trailer. Bang on, hold it. Is moved out of the way. It's getting dark, hurry up. And the final piece. Give her a good tug and just keep going. Is winched back onto the road. Right there. That's it, that's it. Definitely a feel good moment for all of us. With their mountain recovery in the bag. Good job, man. Uh, well done, everybody. You too, Bob. Job. Thanks. MSA's first double heavy job is in the books. It is a big deal. We are able to do that ourselves. Clear it up now. Thanks for the good work, folks. kilometers southwest off the coast. That's some nice scenery. On BC's Vancouver Island. A familiar red wrecker heads to a call. It's a pretty sweet truck. But it's a new face behind the wheel. Owner operator of Peninsula Towing, Don Affleck. This truck is HR 126. We purchased it off of Jamie Davis. It's like a Cadillac. It's so soft floating down the road. It's just an absolute treat to drive. The minute I found out it was available, I just jumped at it. So let's go look at the peak. Yeah. Months ago. HR 126 was up for sale. The body was new when we put it on. 
Right. Yeah. Uh, new wire rope on it. It is just the coolest looking truck. You could have a red Corvette or you could have 126. Yeah, she looks good. Don couldn't pass up the chance to add the wrecker to his fleet. Well, deal's a deal. Deal's a deal, yeah. All right. I am definitely living my dream right now. Today, 126 rolls into a local shipyard. <laughs> That's unreal. It's enormous compared to what you normally are pulling. Don gets his first look at the Goliath task at hand. It's nothing small. With maintenance complete, it's time to get the Coast Guard vessel to its launching position and back out to sea. They operate a very important service for Canada. We want to make sure we get this job done right. Jeez, eh? I think it's massive. Machines on site will move the ship onto a turntable where it will rotate. And lines from HR 126 will connect to a pulley system, winching the ship into the launch pad cradle. Good to go? We better get out of the way, guys. Loaders. There it goes. Yeah. Start moving the towering vessel. That is incredible. But once it's on the turntable, it's a big ship. It's all on HR 126 to pull it the rest of the way. Getting close to go time. Definitely intimidating. You're starting to wonder what you got yourself into. What exactly did we sign up for here? Oh, boy. Wow. Big one. On Vancouver Island. Oh, boy. At a local shipyard. That is incredible. Peninsula Towing's HR-126 faces a massive job. We've never pulled anything this heavy. With the nearly two million pound ship oh. rotated to position. How are we looking? Don's son, Mike. Good. Anchors their 25 ton wrecker. It's definitely different towing a truck, recovering a truck. Let's just walk this out. Yeah. OK, good, Mike. But to move the ship 100 feet to the launch pad. Keep going. They'll need all 250 feet of winch lines. Keep it coming. Keep going. For a counterintuitive pull. It's a reverse winch. When we're pulling, it's actually going the opposite direction. With lines hooked to cables, running through snatch blocks on the back of the cradle. HR-126 will pull the ship onto the launch pad. We're ready? OK, we're going to run them tight. Hey, 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 hold up. But as the lines tighten. What? Look at it. That cable's. I don't like that. Dawn spots a problem with the cables. It looks like it might bite in there, right? Rubbing against sharp edges under the turntable. It'll snap it, and then we're going to be at full stop. It's going to just carve the cable in half. Oh, it's going there, bud. 230 kilometers northeast. Got winds getting pretty ferocious. Outside of Hope, a 40-ton rotator is on the move. I'm not sure what it's going to look like. At the wheel, Jamie Davis. We're headed out now to do a recovery just by the way scales in Hope. 
Where we're working is a very flat area, kind of a prairie. Arriving on scene, Jamie. Wow, this wind is something else. Gets a full blast of winter. The winds are outrageous. It's too close to the trees. The fact that it snows up to a tree means that I can't just pull the truck sideways without doing damage. Oh, man. Oof. Oh. The first job here really is to pull the trailer and truck backwards away from the tree. But just before he starts the pull. Brake's not off. Oh, Brake is on. It don't start? No. Oh, OK. Um. This is getting winched out with the brakes locked on, which is going to add more time to this job. Jamie finds a saving grace. Oh, there we go. In his LA rotators boom. Usually, we've got to stop, reposition the truck. With a rotator, you can run it this side of the wreck. You can maneuver the boom this way or that. OK. With the 35,000 pound low bed. We're going to stop there. Now clear of the tree. And then I'll change it around. Jamie. I'm coming ahead. Can pull from the front. Oh. The coldest we've had in hold for a long time. Every minute I'm out there, I'm getting colder and colder. <sighs> Frostbitten and beat up. Send me in the ditch. Jamie gets the low bed back onto the road. Okay. It didn't start? Yeah. But he's not the only one <gasps> feeling the deep freeze. If it's cold like this, it won't start. Fortunately, I can start him up. You go and run the engine. Jamie has an old trick up his sleeve. I've done this a million times in the cold weather. I'm going to put a little starting fluid in it. It's really cool to be able to get this going. And he can drive away. Jamie can finally head home. Oh, oh, nice and warm in here. Won't be very long, and I'll be back by the wood stove staying warm. Oh, Jamie Davis out there. Thanks for keeping the road clear. That cable's hang on. On Vancouver Island. It looks like it might bite in there, right? Peninsula's big pole. It's going to just carve the cable in half there. Has stopped before it can begin. But Don yeah. has a quick solution. Let's put a chain on it. Cinching the lines together keep them tight to stop them from snagging sharp edges under the turntable we're forced to adapt and uh, add on the fly the dock master gives the go-ahead come on baby is it even budging Not doing anything. The 25-ton wrecker maxes out. I got nothing. And the ship isn't moving. There's a lot of resistance. I'm not feeling good about this one. Is it even budging? At a Vancouver Island shipyard. No, it's not doing anything. 
A nearly two million pound ship. I got nothing. Has run aground. We can't break it free to get it rolling right now. It's lots of weight. It's gonna give us some fight. Just trying to figure out how to add a little bit to get it rolling. Yeah. And then that, then it'll take over it. But Dawn has an idea. What, to give it a push with the loader? Yeah. Bringing in one of the loaders to overcome the resistance. We gotta get creative. They're gonna push. Oh. With a 20-foot push bar on the front, the loader gets into position. They're ready, they can start pulling now. Don starts the pull. Start winching, start winching. Push, push! There we go. The loader's extra help. Yep, yep. Gets everything moving. There we go. That's allowing us to get the momentum of the ship happening. Keep going. We're up against a formidable foe, and everything's got to be spot on. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going. Twitch, 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 twitch. hours after Peninsula arrived. That's good enough there. The ship reaches its final position. Are we done now? Yeah, we're all done. Yeah. Wow. Seeing this ship finally on the cradle, that was a long, hard-fought battle for us. Have a good night, buddy. Yeah, okay. Appreciate it, man. Thanks a lot. Thanks, guys. Thanks. It's a success for Peninsula. Big teamwork down here. The fellas on the loader assisting us. There is no failure down here. It's get her done. And HR 126 reels in a win. It's a little truck that could. That is definitely the biggest fish I've ever caught. Next time on Highway to Hell. We're close. A break check battle. Andy! Squeezes Team Reliable. Holy man. Hey, hey, hey. Road Warriors. I never see you anymore. He's got the green machine. Cut to the chase. Sparks are flying. And a tanker. Catch up. Tips towards trouble. Don't let it fall back. On a hairpin. Hold on! To the north. Okay. Jamie Davis is called to the summit in his LA rotator. This truck got into a minor fender bender. Let's have a look here. We're going to separate the truck and trailer, tow them, and get them into a repair shop. We've got to pull it out of this snow. You actually have to winch it out, but it's hard winching when the brakes are on. So it might run. If he can start the engine, Jamie might be able to release the brakes. Yeah, it's running. Uh, we'll let it air up. Get in there. We're gonna just run it for maybe a few minutes. Put that in that tow hook, I guess. Get her in there. But there's no time to spare. Plow's sitting up there waiting. You don't want to leave it too long because the plow's got to work in here. 
I'll try to winch it while it's airing. If the brakes aren't fully released, we can still winch this unit ahead. The fully loaded shipping container puts up a fight. Sea cans are a big steel box, and they're designed for maximum weight. The semi weighs in at 100,000 pounds. There's ice and, and compact snow underneath, so we really need those spades to anchor the wrecker. Holy man. Unbelievable. And it's going to take a minute for those spades to actually dig in. Jamie's 40-ton rotator. Yeah, he's coming now. Proves to be more than a match. A little bit more. To get the semi back on the road. We finished the hard part of the job. We'll unhook it here. Now we just have to get this thing wrapped up. At the next pullout. Who is it, Al Quarry? Yep. He's on his way. Al's finished his shift. Away we go. Thanks for the good work, folks. But before he heads home, he pulls into the summit and spots a familiar face. Hey, hey, hey! Sometimes warriors on the hill cross paths. I don't ever see you anymore! Al and I go a long, long ways back, but these days we don't have the time to just sit and chat. Now we're all so busy, eh? Yeah, I haven't washed in a week. <laughs> We've been friends since school, so. Yeah, that's good. He's kind of the brother that I've never had. Yeah, nice, nice. Jamie and Al. No guts, no glory. Have been tow guys for decades. Our families have worked together since the 70s. We're more like old buddies than anything else. My family in its fourth generation of towing, Jamie's in his third. It's interesting to see history repeating itself. Oh, good seeing you. Yeah, have a better day, eh? Al heads for home. Okay, to the yard. Nice to see Al today. We don't cross paths much these days. So that's kind of a bonus to the day. Meanwhile, patrolling the hill. All in all, conditions are good. Curtis sees clear blacktop. The intensity of the snowfall is less. It's just a huge sigh of relief. As a team up here on the Pocahalla, we're getting stronger every year. Okay, road's clear. Cold out there, eh? 100 kilometers north. Sure is, driver. Just past the town of Merritt. One in the dead. A 50-ton wrecker heads to the crash. Winter time is crazy. With reliable towings and color. There's a truck that slid on the ice. The information I have, this truck's in the ditch. Go get it. Late in the day, Andy arrives. I'll just pull up behind you for now. That's reliable. To a 35-ton heavy, already on scene. How you doing? Decent, Johnny, decent. With new reliable operator, John Dodd. Reliable gave me the opportunity to grow with them in a bigger truck. It's going to be a fun one. Try not to damage, it's going to be the key. And the whole load's going to be shifted too. So it's going to fight us the whole way. Going into the brake check, the fully loaded trailer caught an edge and dragged the whole rig into the ditch. Bad spot for his truck to be. Looks like it laid down really soft. But the wreck is in an unusual spot. It's super narrow. It's one of the busier brake checks, which you can't just block off. 
Truckers have to be able to check their brakes. Clapperton brake check. We gotta make sure we can stop. Is the last stop at the top of a 23 kilometer downhill run. Hey, please out here. For truckers, it's quite important so the truckers won't go run away down the hill into the city of Merritt. It's a crucial safety measure. A brake check can literally save a life. So for the recovery, this is our traffic control. The brake check is temporarily rerouted to a live lane. What's happening? They're going to run that as a brake check while we got this closed. We're ready to go. Yeah, I got to admit, it's the first time I've seen one off the road in the brake check. It's time to get to work. The truck's just starting to hook up now. High lines from both wreckers will lift the trailer as low lines pull down on the frame to roll the wreck back onto its wheels. Okay, you ready? Rigging in place. You can watch that side. Andy and John need eyes. All right, hang on a sec on the back of the trailer, where a full load of groceries has shifted against the wall. Trailers aren't really meant to hold load on the wall, so we'll see how this goes. Let's try it. Adding to the pressure. I want this to go good with these guys watching us. The owner and the driver are on scene. You don't want to do any damage because you're going to cost your customer a lot of money. Let's go. Under watchful eyes, let's do this. They begin the 83,000 pound pull. Come on. Heavy load here. It's hard to actually get the truck to stay put. Whoa. What we're listening for is cracking, popping. Otherwise, we're going to end up ripping it right open. Hey. Help, 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 help. Hold on. Andy, hold. Andy! We got a jam up at the brake check. At the top of Clapperton Hill. And they're doing a recovery. Hey. Help, 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 help. I can't hear you. Hold on. Andy, hold. Team Reliable is in a tug of war. Andy! With a loaded trailer. Is it folding? Yeah, he's squishing in. As 45,000 pounds of groceries. Great right at the straps, she's pulling in. Pressure the back wall. The trailer's starting to buckle. If you don't watch out for that, it will tear apart. Show it to him. I'd say we show the customers. Yeah. If we keep pulling on it, so all that we're going to do is rip the sidewall out and we're going to be picking this load up out of the ditch. With the owner on scene. Do you want us to keep trying here? It's on you if we break your trailer. Andy pleads his case. I would unload this now and save the trailer. Yeah. The owner agrees. How soon can you get your trailer here? So Andy calls in an unload crew. Once it's empty, we'll come back and pull it out. Okay, bye. Okay, let's get out of here and go get some food. In this situation, it's better to walk away and do it properly. We get into the brake check up here. It's open again. Good, good. The next day, 250 kilometers southwest. It's another day in paradise. In the Fraser Valley. Oh my, look at this. Abbotsford Police is on scene. It looks like they got pretty stuck. Constable Andre Nadeau is investigating the discovery. Very expensive piece of machinery. It's something you'd see on commercial building sites. 
of a $400,000 telehandler stolen and ditched on the side of the road. I don't envy the people that have to get this out of here. A 50-ton rotator is on the way. Welcome to my world. With aggressive towing's Chris Mervin. Our local law enforcement found a stolen crane. We've been told that it won't start. We're going to have to pick it up. A teal 70-ton rotator <laughs> follows close behind with owner Jason Davis. In our business, we see a lot of strange stuff. Let's bite the machine. With its 125-foot telescoping boom, the telehandler works as a forklift or suspended platform. This unit Brand new, eh? has been missing for two years. Always been taken somewhere and hidden, still looking like brand new. Somebody tried to move it, and then off the road it goes, and here it is. Weighing over 50,000 pounds, Oof. the machine has been left in the ditch. We brought two heavy rotators out to this job because of the weight of the vehicle. That is a gross lifting eye, though, isn't it? It is ugly. But lifting could be an issue. That's the shackle from the bottom and go up. It doesn't have the same points as highway tractors. We don't want to rip them out. As Constable Nadeau looks on, Merv tries an unconventional solution. We've been told that they didn't want to start. But after they punch out ignitions, sometimes we can get them running. With the screwdriver. Well, let's see if we can make some magic happen. Wow. Did he get us started? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's too good. This is not my hobby. I don't steal things for fun. <laughs> no one else could get us started. You know, he's got the touch. We ruined the double rotator job, boys. You back it out, smart guy. Let's go. We came out with the cavalry. But now that it's running, it can drive itself out. Merv completes the recovery. Job well done, boys. Woo! Well, that was easy. Without a wrecker. We'll gladly take not lifting it. All right, to the trailer. But we always want to be prepared. We're coming good. For whatever it may be. I called the owner and told him there was no damage. He was really thrilled. Good job, Merv. <laughs> We probably brought out a little bit more equipment than we needed to get the job done. Didn't really need it, did we? <laughs> you never know. You never know. But better to be safe than sorry. As the wreckers roll out, we gotta figure out where it came from. Constable Nadeau resumes his investigation. We'll have to do a little bit more digging to get some answers. They're all on their way. Too easy. Anybody know what's going on out there? Two and a half hours northeast. The semi in the ditch with the brake check. At the top of Clapperton Hill. There's a recovery to record. Team Reliable is back. Round two. Fight. Yeah, buddy. Yesterday, the fully loaded trailer slid into the ditch dragging the tractor with it. Now, Andy inspects the trailer, unloaded earlier today. If we would have pulled any harder, it would have crinkled like a pop can. I'm glad we decided to unload. For the recovery, highways authorities have another traffic plan. What they want to do we're just going to shut the entrance to here, and they're going to line up. Semis will wait in the right lane for the brake check to reopen. We need to be quick, because they don't want to close the brake check down too long. Reliable will have a 15-minute window to get it done. 
We'll quickly do the recovery, pull it up, and then you can let them come through and do their thing. Okay. Traffic control is going to be key in this one. As flaggers start setting up, Andy and John rig up. We're going to pull all our cables out, have everything already rigged up so that we're not wasting any time. Okay, let's close her down and get her pulled. The brake check is now closed. All trucks must stop and hold until we're done. And the clock is ticking. It's time to get this show on the road and get this thing up here. Right lane block. Shut down there, we got a couple records on scene. Right away. Oh, here we go, coming down the wrong lane. One driver isn't falling in line. That's all it takes. Oh, what the hell? One guy can cause a total traffic jam right on the highway. No one's moving. I need you back over. You need to back up and get over. Oh, that's sucking. Get ready to put your brakes on. North of Merritt. Attention all trucks. You are required to stop and hold until the brake check is back open. Reliable has a 15-minute window to finish a recovery. Time to work faster and get this done. But now... Truck coming down the wrong lane. A semi is blocking the open lane. You need to back up and get over. Traffic control moves swiftly. Truckers in the right lane. And the errant driver is redirected into the holding lane. The one lane is open. We're all clear now. Thanks for keeping our trucks in check. Back at the wreck. Ready, John? Quick, quick. The clock is running. Under a bit of a time crunch. We got to get this out. Pull in the truck out of the ditch. On Team Reliable's recovery. It's always the high point of the recovery, the big bang when it comes back over. Now, it's up to John. We're working in a really tight area here. We're close. To reel in the back end. John's a skinny little guy. He'll fit. Finally, the semi is back on the blacktop. No damage. Success is a wonderful feeling with time running out. We'll get out of the way so they can open the brake check. Holy crap, that didn't take very long. We got the brake check back open within our 15 minute window. Let them in, let them in. Get everything flowing again, back to business. Are we moving up there yet? Yes, sir. It looks like we're all clear now. Right up, thank you. As night falls, Team Reliable. Perfect, right there. Wraps up. Feels great to finally get this job done. Right. No one ever wants to give up on something. Drivers that we hired, they have this internal desire to do the job well and do it right. Safe travel. Yeah, you two murdered. Good, you can back around here. Two hours southwest. Sure, a lot of traffic. In the Fraser Valley. Typical Friday night. Abbotsford Police Sergeant Paul Walker. I'm quite busy, everyone's going home. Patrols Highway 1. I'm looking for drivers that are excessively speedy. I'm looking for impaired drivers. Delta 6, you send me a copy. Just after 10 p.m. I'm just grabbing a file here. Caller, I was reporting erratic driving. A disturbing report comes in. The driver's being observed by a citizen. The driver ended up getting out, stumbled around, and was drinking some liquor. This individual just got into their car. 
and he's going mobile. Can you give me a direction to travel once it leaves? He heads to the driver's last known location. I've been to many crashes involving impaired drivers, some of them fatal. I have to go to the victim's family. Almost at McKellen. Telling them that they've lost a loved one. That never leaves. I think I got it. Sergeant Walker spots his target. This driver notices me and attempts to lose me. And pursues the vehicle. Wonder. I block him in to ensure that he can't put that vehicle back in motion. Delta 6, I'm out with it, boxed in. How are we doing? Are they going to be compliant? Are they going to have weapons? Okay, how much alcohol have you had to drink tonight? Well, why can't I smell alcohol? Simply take control of him, separate him from the vehicle. So then why would someone say you're drinking and driving? With backup in place, out comes the breathalyzer, used to measure blood alcohol. Take a deep breath in and you'll blow continuous air, okay? Yes, sir. But when the device is ready... You're not blowing. I can feel it through the device here. Blow, 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 blow. We're not blowing, sir. This driver is doing everything in their power to make my job more difficult. Okay, sir, we're not going there right now. Cops there. In Abbotsford. Blow, 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 nope. Police respond to a disturbing report. Blow, blow, blow. No, you're not making a seal. I can feel the air coming out. With a breathalyzer test. Okay, sir, we're not going there right now. I've heard almost everything when it comes to responses uh, from different drivers. I'm not, I'm not having this. It's your choice. You can refuse or you can refuse. The driver gets one last chance. You're required by law to provide a sample of your breath. If you refuse, you will be arrested. Somebody who's not complying, I will give them opportunity. Are we going to try again? No, I'm not trying anymore. Okay, right now you're under arrest for refusing to provide a sample of your breath, okay? Ultimately, in some cases, the drivers force our hand. Okay, sir, have a seat. With the driver safely in a police vehicle, officers examine his car. He's going to be issued a 90-day driving prohibition. He's being transported back to our cell block to be held until he's sober enough to care for himself. His vehicle will be held at the impound lot. The driver was quite intoxicated, so to remove that individual from the roads, I know that citizens in our community will be safer tonight with him gone. Just had a cruiser pass us. They're out here making the road safe. Three hundred kilometers east. She's clear. Heading down to a Soyuz. Reliable's Dylan Greenwood heads into BC's southern interior. There's some hairpin corners that are coming up. We're three hours outside of our service area. This is unfamiliar territory for me. How the heck did you do that? Arriving on scene. A little buckle. <laughs> Dylan gets his first look at the rolled over tanker. Came around the corner a little too hot. The liquid in the trailer carried the trailer over. Liquid that's inside, it's dust control. The fully loaded rig is hauling a liquid chemical used on dirt roads and mine sites to prevent dust from building up on the roadways. 
joining Dylan tonight. We got the whole collision craft crew. They look good. <laughs> is a local tow company. Roger? Roger, yeah. Hey. Owned by Roger Agostino. Collision craft used to be a body shop. Ended up turning one tow truck to an addiction. Now towing's our thing. The one right. seam on the back looks like it's gonna fall apart. I don't think our attempt at load. Yeah. If we were to carry this thing overloaded, we risk spilling this load onto the highway. They're bringing the pump. A pump truck is on its way. They vacuum, right? Yeah. But the laid over position. The breathers aren't gonna work with fluid against them. No. Is a problem. The way it's supposed to drain when it's on its wheels is not gonna work. So we're going to have to adapt and overcome. To drain the tanker. I think we're gonna have to drill some holes in the top of it. They'll need new ports to pump through. So then this would be a second compartment. That should cover everything. Yeah. Two separate tanks, correct? Yeah. Okay, so get a four inch hole, okay. So the customer is willing to drill some holes in it. Roger fires up the chop saw and gets to work. This corner is known to us for accidents. It's a bad corner. On a notorious stretch of Highway 3, known for its hairpin turns, it's a tricky drive for all motorists. It's got two runway lanes and four really hard switchbacks on that mountain. I mean, they're brutal. Overnight freight runs. Kind of a lousy corner, eh? Crowd the turn. Crews working there. Slow down as you're going by. We gotta keep an eye on things. Break real tight, get through. Very nasty. What's going on with the three? In BC's southern interior. They got the right lane blocked. On Highway 3, Dylan and a local tow company prepare for a tricky unload. To drain a tanker, sometimes it's difficult because you gotta cut holes on the top. So, we should be good now. Perfect. I'm just coming up to it now. With a second tanker arriving. Beautiful. Pass that up to Roger. All right, we're in business. Yep, let's roll. Good to go. They can now pump out. And now we're cooking. The 23 tons of liquid load. It's basically a hurry up and wait type of thing. I think we're there. After half an hour. It's empty. The tanker is drained. It's good to be salvaging the load and getting it back to the owner. Dylan and Roger turn to the recovery. Put our heavy down on this side. Yeah. If you're heavy on this side, it'll be a flip. Yep. Uh, get it out. But the wreck is lying on the high side of a sloped stretch of road. We're working on an angle so its momentum could carry it over and put the vehicle onto its other side. It could be pretty violent. To prevent the wreck from overrolling, Dylan adds a line from a third wrecker, redirected off a tree. Because of the angle of the road, we're gonna put a catch line on just so it doesn't slam down hard, so we lay it out nicely. That just slows down the rotation of the tanker. With lines from the two heavies and a catch line from a third wrecker off a tree, They'll roll the tanker onto its wheels. We want to carry this thing over as gentle as possible. Helping with the rigging is Roger's 16-year-old son, Kyle. Beauty. It's pretty sweet. Not many people get the opportunity to do this. Kyle is a great guy to have on a wreck. He's really into it, and he's hands-on. Start winding. With Roger coordinating. We're good to go. And Dylan operating the 50-ton. 
They start the pull. Yeah, get me some friction there. We want to pick it up. We don't want to drag it. Catch that line up. We don't want that crashing back down on the side. Loser. Don't let it fall back. Ah. Anybody know what happened up on Highway 3 there? A sloped section of road. They're doing a recovery. Take more on the red. As Dylan and a local tow company. Don't let it fall back. On high alert. This corner is definitely banked. This might carry enough momentum to flop back over on the other side. Here it comes. It comes over so smooth. It looks like slow motion. Touch. We're there. That was beautiful. <laughs> they laid on a bed of pillows. That's how I like to see them go. That's the only way to make them go. <laughs> it's too dangerous otherwise. There is definitely a brotherhood of towing. We're stronger as an industry when we're working together. I will get this thing picked up. While Dylan prepares to haul the tanker away. We want to get this wreck cleared off the highway as fast as possible. So... We're gonna drag it up to the next pullout. Roger and son Kyle. Good job, Kyle. Get packed up. It was great work with Dylan. Everything went well. Let these guys finish up. Get off their pile. Roger's team did great. They had a great crew and I'd work with them again. It's open. Later, another big lap. No. Three hours west. I guess it's that time of year. At the aggressive yard. See that one battery? Merv's rotator is in for maintenance. We get a list together. What we're missing, what we need. These are getting a little old. So we're gonna slap a new set in old Bertha here. Definitely want to make sure your truck is ready for battle. In the office. Special visitors. Hi, buddy. Stop by. Jason's youngest daughter, Tia, with her sons, Dawson, and the newest addition. Hi, sweet potato. Five month old, Dallas. Here you are. There's the big boy. Hmm? It's always a special day when they come a couple times a week. We get a drop in. Where's the rotate? Okay. Whoa, look at this truck. Is that it? Oh. Drive it. You want to drive it? Yeah. Maybe one day. <laughs> For Dawson, it gives him the opportunity to see what it's all about. Who doesn't like being in a tow truck? <laughs> I'll give you feet off the seat, buddy. Feet off the seat. Feet off the seat. No, 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 no. Yeah, there you go. Good job, buddy. Here. See, if that was me or Mattia, there'd be no way. I've mellowed with age. We'd get in the trucks. Watch your feet. Don't get your feet on the seat. <laughs> Now Dawson's doing whatever he wants. Hey, this will be a cherished photo one day. So cute. Hmm? Yep. It's kind of surreal having grandkids now. The succession of life, right? The rest has been here for 30 years. For me and Jamie, we started with one truck in the 80s. It remains a family business. Dallas. It's an early start into the family business. That's a great thing to see. Makes it all worthwhile. You always hope the kids and the grandkids, they take over the business and can take it to the next level. <laughs> <laughs> next time on Highway Through Hell. Look out, look out. Too close for comfort. All right, here we go. Al scrambles. Spinning my wheel. Jamie's uphill battle. Not a good way to start out is on the edge. 
Damn, that looks like a bad thumb. And Team Otto have a heavy metal. Kyle! Tug of War. No, go stop.
this time. On highway through hell. Look out, look out. Too close for comfort. All right, here we go. Al scrambles. Spinning my wheels. Jamie's uphill battle. Not a good way to start out. Is on the edge. Damn, that looks like a bad thumb. And Team Otto have a heavy metal Kyle. tug of war. No, no, stop. Did ever get an ugly old day? Eh? High on the Coca Cola. Like blizzard conditions. Winter is slamming drivers. Someone's gonna pick up here shortly. Highways maintenance supervisor, Curtis Brown. I don't think it's gonna get better. Stays on top of a growing storm. Can you try to widen out that slow lane going up? Just push it as uh, close to the guardrail as you can. We've got a very unique little section of the Coquihalla, what gets a ton of snow in, in such a short area. We want to do things smart, but we also want to be innovative. Behind the scenes is an advanced system supporting road safety. Hopefully everyone just respects our signs and slows down. 200 kilometers southwest, Transportation Management Center, Jen speaking. The nerve center of BC Transportation. We have a lot of signs that we can change when things happen. Keeps eyes on the road. Our job is mostly making sure that traffic is flowing smoothly. If we see any incidents, concerns on the highway, we get in touch with our contractors. With more than 600 cameras province-wide, the BC Transportation Management Center keep a real-time watch on the Coke. TMC Dispatch. Partnering with the Ministry, we've focused closely on being proactive about storms so that we can try to keep it moving. That's our main goal, getting everybody to their destination. Okay, and do you know at this point in time how many lanes are blocked? A call comes in. Okay, thank you for the heads up. I will contact our contractors right away. Reporting an incident near the summit. Back there. A semi has slid into a snowbank, partially blocking the entrance to Zomptia's brake check. Got a jam up at the brake check. Minutes away. All right, here we go. In a 50-ton wrecker. Yeah, it's supposed to be around, but up. Al Quiring heads to the call. The off-ramp there is a notorious spot. It's in a high wind area, so snow gets glazed over. That's an accident waiting to happen. It's important we get the vehicle removed as soon as possible because you don't know what's coming down that tube. By the brake track there, just be careful, guys. But before Al can arrive... He's really slick down there. Look out, look out. Now we got a real match. on the coke. Look out, look out. A secondary collision is preventing vital access to the brake check. It's a spot where you're supposed to make sure your brakes are operating properly because that eight and a half percent grade for like 12 kilometers is a long ways down. Al arrives on scene to a familiar truck. 
The flatbed is part of the aggressive towing fleet. Jason and I have had a lifelong relationship. Maybe I can get a free lunch one day or something. Al throws a line on the side. You ready to roll? And quickly pulls the low bed clear. There you go, sir. Okay, thanks, Mr. Clarence. With barely a scratch to show for it. I'm going to be tow truck guys helping tow truck guys. Today we're lucky because Al's up here on the hill. Nice to have friends. All right. First one that's off the road. But the rig that Al was first called for. He's blocking the lane. Still remains. We'll pull this out and get rid of the traffic queue there. I can give him a little tug out of the way, and then hopefully we'll be back to normal. Highways maintenance arrives. I just put a bunch of salt and sand down. To lend some grit to the slippery surface. They do their job, and that's to keep that road clear and traffic flowing. With the semi on the hook. Firing over the mile. Al pulls it out of the way. Right up. And access to the brake check. We're now. Is restored. The highway's maintenance and the Ministry of Transport. Copy that, car 2300. DNC dispatch clear. We work together to try and make the motors safe and keep that road clear. Have a nice day. Thank you very much, Mr. Clary. Good to see a green truck up here. Five hundred kilometers northeast. You must have got a little more about me. In the foothills of the Rockies, a forty-ton LA rotator heads to a call. Kind of a priority call. With Jamie Davis at the wheel. The main roads are clear. It's the back road or the off-road that we're kind of worried about. We're heading to a driveway to somebody's house in the mountains. I'm spinning my wheels right now. But it's an uphill battle for the 64,000 pound rotator. Not a good way to start out. Compact snow is slippery. So the big truck like the rotator is a bit of an issue. Jamie backs in. It's a tight little driveway. To find a utility van hanging on by a thread. After the one end went down already, they made a decision to bring in a machine and hold it so that it wouldn't flip over. But as he tries to get close... I'm sliding. The elevated driveway proves to be a challenge. Each side of the driveway is just a bank, straight down. We could easily go off the edge too. Arriving to help Jamie. It's icy. Operator Rob Wall. Recovering the rotator out of there would be a big job. You think that van's expensive? The rotator's worth a lot more than that. <laughs> that might get us up high. Jamie, armor's up. This'll be enough to get it where we need to go. And that should do the trick. It's chewing. I'm actually amazed. The road's a lot slippier than I thought it was. Go down and come back with more speed. 
getting there is a fight, eh? Okay. Well, we got up the hill, that's the first part. But now, up close. We don't have much space to work with here. The driveway is very steep on each side. Jamie sees the magnitude of the job at hand. It's actually one of them jobs that looks easy, but it's really hard. Yeah. This is more complex. It's risky. Yeah, it's holding, but just by a thread. This thing could go very bad in a hurry. I don't like where we are. On an elevated mountain driveway. That shoulder is just right there. A 2,000 pound utility van. I don't like where we are. Hangs in the balance. We have very limited room to work and pull it out. But to navigate the narrow space, Jamie's counting on his LA rotator. We can move the boom to the side, winch it sideways and winch it up. It's really the best tool for this job. Is that thing pretty secure? Like it ain't gonna go anywhere. Yeah. With an anchor already established. The bucket's dug right in there, good. Let's get stairs there to hold it. Make sure it doesn't flip over. This one here, straight to the back end from here. Jamie takes advantage. Yeah. And then the other one will run off there to the front. Of what's available. Go right around it. With one line from the rotated boom and a second line off the skid steer, Jamie will drag the van sideways onto level ground. <laughs> okay. Let's see what it'll do. These vans are real tippy with their high center of gravity. Oof. We could flip this van over. You gotta be careful with this. So I'll pull this on the front end. Yeah. Watch that band don't come back into the tow truck. Yeah, I know. It's just about to pop up. Okay. With one last tug. It's up. All four wheels. Okay. Find the road. I'm afraid of him coming back. But the one-ton van yeah. is inches from rolling down the other side. I'm not feeling at 100% comfortable. You make the wrong move here. Oh, I know. It's built up and very steep on each side. You don't want to fall off that driveway. I'm just gonna pick them right up. With a high slung line. Uh, just back up a little bit again, if it will. Jamie. To just uh, cut more. Swings the van in line with the driveway. It's really a valuable part of the job here to be able to rotate the boom and support the load as it comes back onto the roadway. Up there. With the van fully on the road. He can back up if he wants. Jamie moves out of the way. Just keep going the way you are, yeah. And the owner. Yeah, you're good. 
reverses towards safety. That was good. That worked out good. Kind of a technical recovery. I've owned big ones, small ones, in between all of them. The LA rotator is just so perfect. It is, to me, probably the best tool out there. We got her done. As you go north, it gets real nice. 700 kilometers to the northwest. Better than it was hours ago. Outside Quesnel, BC. Damn, that looks like a bad thumb. This is just happening. Early this morning. En route to the crash in a 25 ton auto wrecker. Rolling solo. Operator Kyle Langlois. Rob today is actually on his day off, so I'm hoping I don't have to call him. Because we don't like calling him in on his day off. <laughs> If I can do it by myself, uh, it's a proud moment for me. I'm glad Kyle is taking this responsibility and trying to do this stuff on his own. But you don't know until you get there. 15 minutes from town. Oh, it's a good one. Kyle takes in the wreckage. That would have been one hell of a ride. It looks like he hit that side too. The dump truck lost control. Bouncing off a rock wall before coming to a stop in the snowbank. From what I hear, they walked out of her. He is right on his side. Being solo here by myself, there's some pressure to get the job done properly. Challenging about this recovery, I would say, getting it back up onto the road. It's a lot of work. Ah. Uh. I mean, I'll be doing everything. That's gonna take a while to clean up. There's a big wreck there. On Highway 97. We're out here solo. Kyle from Auto. I get the pleasure of trying my best to do everything on my own. Faces off against a dump truck and trailer. Challenging about this recovery, I would say, getting it back up onto the road. <sighs> yeah, he's empty on the pup. But even unloaded, the 64,000 pound wreck will be a struggle. I'm in the 25 ton, so it's a little bit more of a job. Things come into factor when you're just one truck, so. It would be better to have a second wrecker on site for this one. Feeling outmatched by the load. We're gonna do this small. Kyle will return with more iron. I think they would have done it by now, but I guess not. We're gonna pull that one later. Anybody give me a road report on Highway 1? 650 kilometers south. All looking good, nice and clear. In the Fraser Valley. So why are so many police there? Officers from BC Highway Patrol. We're ready to go. 
Copy. Roll out. Under the supervision. Stay safe. Of Chief Superintendent Holly Turton. Hope that nobody hits us. For a public awareness campaign called Slow Down, Move Over. When motorists pass vehicles on the side of the road that have red, blue, or yellow flashing lights, they need to slow down and, where possible, move over. We have multiple police cars on the side of the road, and where there are people who fail to slow down and move over, the officer will then conduct a vehicle stop with him. Minutes into the operation. This white trades vehicle, it had the opportunity to move over, but it did not. No. Officers spot a motorist disregarding the law. I am literally inches from the curb lane, and I now am trying to conduct a traffic stop, and I don't even have enough room to open my door. Point in case, there's a perfect example of a driver that is not paying attention. That could have been me as I got out of my car. We are putting our life on the line here. Just pull over here, okay, both of you and exchange your information, okay? We're all at risk when people don't give us the space to do the work that we need to do on the highways. It's not just police. There are fire departments, ambulances, tow truck drivers. Hey, Dustin, you on here? It's an initiative. 10-4. It hits too close to home. For former aggressive operator, Dustin Wardstrom. I was down the job. Years ago, while loading a vehicle on the side of the highway, Dustin was struck. Cube van lost control and smashed into me, crushing me in between that vehicle and my truck. I ended up in the hospital for just under two months. It was very traumatic for us as a company, and our driver's life has been affected for the rest of his life. You see a truck on the side of the road, slow down, move over. Today, BC Highway Patrol officers. The reason I'm pulling you over today is because when you pass an emergency vehicle okay. with the red and blue lights on, yep. it's your job to slow down to below 70 and move to the left lane. Enforce the law that will save lives. So I need to get your driver's license, please. I'll be right back, sir. I worry about my officers. And it's not uncommon for me to find out that my police officers have been in car accidents. You're receiving a ticket for failing to slow down or move over for an official vehicle, okay? The fine's $173. Drive safe. It's important to remember that people who are working on the highway, they want to go home to their families at the end of the night, just like the rest of us. Down, over when you see flashing lights. Good morning, boys and girls. Eight hours north. Where is that, Rex? On Highway 97. Still there? This will be interesting. Kyle returns to the crash. Boy, you're gonna try it again. Joining in a 50-ton record. I'll let Kyle do it. Owner of Auto, Kyle's uncle, Rob Barber. He started it, he can finish it. I'm gonna leave my truck off to the side and we'll see if we can do it with his truck without helping him. And there's our gravel truck. Yesterday, the truck bounced off a rock wall, slamming onto its side before spinning to a stop. You should tie the box down to the frame. Ball. When I was Kyle's age, I learned by trial and error and had to learn the hard way. So it doesn't fold out when it rolls over? Okay. 
I'm glad to pass my knowledge down to Kyle. Just poop that. Wrap that? Yeah. When Uncle goes to show his little tricks, I try and pay attention the best I can. Well, let's do a quick closure. I wish shut down right now. It's always bad to close the highway. So it's kind of critical that he can get in there and stand it up as fast as he can. Hopefully it won't have to sit too long. Using only the 25 ton, with lines to the front and rear axles, Kyle will roll the dump truck back onto its wheels. Roll it over. Okay. This is Kyle's first time to roll a truck over by himself. Definitely some carnage out there today. And he's also blocking the highway, so it's got to put a little more stress on him. But the 32-ton wreck is winning the tug of war. You're dragging it out against Kyle's 25-ton heavy. I'm on the controls. My truck's starting to slide. Hold on one end. If my truck keeps sliding, we won't have enough room to be able to operate the truck behind me. We won't be able to do the recovery. No, no, stop. Kyle! On Highway 97. They're still there. A sliding wrecker. No, no stop. Is putting the brakes on Kyle's recovery. This Kyle's trying to pull the truck over, but it's a little bit heavier than his small 25 ton. Pull on one end. So Uncle Rob. Pull on just to drive. Steps in. Just to drive? Just to drive to give some guidance. No, no stop, well they're just the front then. We're gonna try to get the front tires to come down first to flex the frame rails. Rocking back and forth. And use some of the truck's weight so the truck will help itself roll over. There it goes. Yeah, you're letting it down. With a little coaching. There. Good. The wreck is back on its wheels. That was good. That went actually fairly decently. It's nice to have Rob on scene. Every time I do a recovery, he's got a new trick or a new way of doing things. Break it down so you can get off the road. They're almost done. Now that we have the truck uprated, We can get them ready to toll back into town. But as Kyle moves to pull the pup trailer out. A little bit of a hard pull. He hits another snag. Yeah, I'm spinner. <laughs> I'm on ice. Fortunately, I can drag it. Backup is already on scene. Turns out that I'm going to need my uncle to pull me out. A little embarrassing, I guess. With a little family support. I'm good. We ended up actually needing the uh, 50 ton after all. Kyle finally gets the trailer out of the snowbank. Pull it away. And on its way back to the yard. Kyle did very well. Next time, I'm pretty confident he can do it by himself. Yeah, just saw him get towed away. This was a good recovery. It was a good accomplishment. There's no better feeling. The road's open back up again, right? Yes, sir. 
operating down here for now. 640 kilometers south in the Fraser Valley. A loaded rock truck is buried in the bog. Stuck in the mud. Responding to the call, an aggressive 50 ton. Come on, come on. And operator Jaden Dick behind the wheel. Hopefully it's not too difficult, I can get the job done. Not too sure how this is gonna work out. On his first solo job. I can't get over far enough to pull the trailer over. Jaden was forced to call for backup. We're here. Let's get as much up as we can. A few lessons learned. Some things I could do differently next time. Jaden, he'll either be able to do it, think his way through it, or he'll call for help. As long as you can count on that, I can pretty much send him anywhere. Helping out today. Are you ready to go play in the mud? Always. Is newly hired swamper, Travis Scott. Are you? No. I got my gum boots, though. It's always nice to have an extra set of hands. Arriving at a local farm. This looks like she's going to be a fun time. Jaden. Oh, damn. Gets his first look. He was backing in to dump his load off and just spun his wheels and sunk himself in the mud. Hopefully we don't have too much suction holding her down. But rescuing a rock truck. I don't think we can really pull off anything else. Comes with unique challenges. Yeah, I think that's all we got. On a normal track trailer, you've got two hook points at the front. You can distribute the weight evenly. OK, we're going to start rigging. This rock truck only has one hook point. Weighing in at over 22 tons. Ah. The single rig point will be doing double duty. We're going to hook two lines so we can kind of lift it and pull at the same time. Should be good. Hopefully, our recovery point at the front is strong enough to take the capacity of two lines. Nobody to lean on. I gotta come up with the best plan to get the truck out. You ready to party? I was born ready. Jaden starts pulling with the 50 ton. Picking the pole. We kind of break a section of the mud and winch it up and out. Yeah. But just as the front wheels break free. No! Ah, she's just spinning. Definitely not an ideal situation to be in. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. In the Fraser Valley. Ah, she's just spinning. A partially loaded rock truck. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is weighing down Jaden's single record job. It's a lot heavier than a typical dump truck. Gonna make our recovery a little harder. But Jaden sees a way. You wanna dump that? Yep. To lighten the load. Just so we lose weight. Jaden really understands physics and weights. He can add up the math and come up with the right decision to make stuff happen. Go again. 3,000 pounds lighter. Okay, everybody clear. Jaden resumes the pull. Keep going. With an eye on the lone tow pin. And having two lines to the same point on the front of the truck, you kind of want to make sure you're not going to break anything. The rear wheels... Come on. ...finally climb onto firm ground, and the pin... There we go! ...holds. Hey, hey! 
The dump truck is free. Oh, yeah. Jaden's second heavy job. You're good. Was muddy. Hopefully he's good. But he's coming away with a clean victory. It feels good getting the job done on my own. That shows everybody that I can complete whatever they throw at me. Jaden did a top-notch job. The reason I know that, I didn't get a phone call and I don't have a broken tow truck in my yard. Rasser did a good job. One hundred twenty kilometers northeast. It's pretty messy. Unexpected snowfall. Looks like there's traffic stopped just ahead of us, guys. On the Canyon Highway. Getting back up here. Catches drivers by surprise. The mountains in that area have severe winter conditions that come upon you without notice. Any wreckers out there? Working non-stop calls in a reliable 50-ton wrecker. Busy night. Operator Dylan Greenwood. Once I'm done my job, I'm off to the next one. Work doesn't stop. Just gonna back down the hill. Go truck backing down. This guy must be the man. Dylan arrives at the first of two lumber B trains blocking the highway. Oh, wow. He's met by highway authorities. Spun out and slid backwards into the brand new truck. Oh, yeah. We'll get him dragged apart and get it to the top of the hill and worry about it there. He should be able to help me. Dylan hooks on to the front with the 50 ton. with the driver's help, pulls the lumber B train free. Keep her coming, bud. Hauling the massive load up the hill. They're grossed at 120,000 pounds. They cleared one. There we go. Perfect. With the first rig out of the way, you guys can go. Good to go. go. Yep. Dylan reverses back down. Gonna be back and down, grab the last truck. To the second B train. Cross the frame rail. Ouch. But upon closer inspection... Engine oil underneath it? Just cool it. Dylan spots game-changing damage. The fan is definitely pushed into the rad, so we're going to try to keep it from running. He has to pull this rig up the hill. It's a dead power unit, so it's extremely heavy being a fully loaded B-train of lumber. With no help, from the damaged tractor. Okay, take up black. That worked. I'm gonna have to pull up the full weight onto my wrecker. 120,000 pounds of lumber. Heavy load. It's a big boat anchor. In the Fraser Canyon. They're working on it. Okay, take up flag. A damaged engine deadlift. Didn't work. Is 
putting Dylan. To the test. As we're pulling this thing up here, you're dangling a lot of weight off the wreckers. Backing up really bad. But with traffic at a standstill. Okay, go. Going. Dylan pushes ahead. So we're just trying to get up a little bit of speed, get it into the grip so that we can uh, we can carry it to the top. Just gonna pull you up to the level side here. The more communication, the safer it's gonna be. Just heavy. As soon as I get to the well sanded and well plowed area on the road, I start in subtraction. I'm just going out to the pull-up. We'll separate her up there. Take her to the yard. Here you go. Come to the stop. That's good to get the job done and get that thing cleared off the highway as fast as possible. Number three. Clear and gone. With a broke down B train off the road. Thank you very much, guys. Traffic is flowing again. But a night of relentless toes. You get a little tired in the end of it, and then you're on to the next job. As Dylan thinking about his future. Spending time with my boys and my wife, Chelsea, is number one. I want to spend as much time with them as possible. You only get so much time with them before they want to leave. Busy night for you, tow boy. These guys are dedicated and sacrifice a lot of their lives to, you know, help the general public. I don't have to work for 24 hours, I'm good. Dylan finally heads back. See you guys later. With change on his mind. This is tough. You gotta sort of think about those things. But we'll see. Have a good night there, bud. Next time on Highway Through Hell. Holy moly. Team Reliable. Losing it. Battles. Oh. A torn trailer. Oh. Geez, look at this. A home delivery. Ah, oh, baby. Has Peninsula towing. Racing the tide. What a mess. And a roadside recovery. Gotta watch it around the corner. Puts Jamie. Man, oh man. In the danger zone. Way through hell. There's multiple wrecks. One of the biggest wrecks ah! of the season. That's a roller coaster wreck. Tests team reliable. Hey, hey. Well, this is a mess. Jamie. We'll be really lucky if that thing makes it. Tackles a torn trailer. And Murd. He's fighting us. Wrestles a collapsed crane. Running out of real estate. How's the coke looking tonight? Pretty busy. Holiday traffic. Late December. Everybody's trying to get to their Christmas destination. High on British Columbia's Coquihalla Highway. You have a safe travel to wherever you're going. Happy holidays. In this road, the like snow can come any time and any moment. You need to be prepared for driving in this road in winter time. Something happened up ahead. 
40 kilometers north of Merritt. They just closed the highway. It's because of an accident. Unbelievable. Biggest wreck I've seen. Holy. Already on sight. He just took a ride all the way down the pool. Reliable towings, Ty Kennedy. Man, imagine that right here. It's not every day that you see a massive wreck like this. Charging to the scene. It's that two tow truck passing. Two reliable heavy wreckers. We have all of our heavy division basically from the lower mainland of Merritt on the way. We're gonna try to get this highway open again. With operator Andy Cullum behind the wheel of the big 50 ton. From what I'm hearing, it sounds like quite the wreck. So how many trucks is there total? There's three here. Despite the massive pileup. Holy. No one was seriously injured. What a jumbled mess this is. It's a multi-truck wreck. What's loaded, what's empty. Right now, I have no idea. That's, uh, that's something. That is something. Wow. That's crazy. North of Merritt. Wow, that's a lot of dead metal. On the Coquihalla. That's a roller coaster ride. Unreal. Team Reliable faces one of the biggest wrecks this winter. Is it empty or loaded? Loaded. 19,000. Ty needs all the iron he can get. The nice part is we get that 200 excavator here. When something like this happens, you want to make sure that you bring the right people, the right equipment. We've got to get this portion of the road cleaned up so we can actually open the lane, get our wreckers by. It's a medium-sized excavator. It's going to help with the offloading, help with cleaning up the road. Involved in the crash is a logging truck, a black highway tractor, and a 70-foot tractor trailer on top. Hey, it's clear. With the first piece of the logging truck moved to a clear lane, Andy Let's go have a look. backs into position. Trucks everywhere. Trucks on top of trucks. Photos don't do this justice. And the bunk is up through the base of the trailer? Andy spots a concern. A bunk is still attached to the logging truck. At least the bunk didn't penetrate the floor. It's just kind of holding against the landing gear brace. Bunks are metal posts up to 10 and a half feet high that secure a load of logs to the trailer. The bunk right now is sitting on the fifth wheel plate. But the bunk... Negatory. ...is trapped. Is that moving it off? ...under a fully loaded trailer. With the truck and the trailer on top, plus we have all the logs putting way too much pressure on that plate. Also on scene... I wonder if we could pull the logs out of it. ...is former reliable operator Dylan Greenwood. We could try to pull the logs, and it's going to drop down. Pulling the bunk out is the only way to untangle the wrecks. The idea is we get that fifth wheel plate off, and we can pull these logs out from underneath it, and we can slam this thing back down on the top of these two trucks. One more. 
with a total of three wreckers. Okay. Now on scene. The team starts rigging. Dylan's gonna use the excavator. We're gonna put a chain sling around the log. With lines securing the tractor and a second line from the 50 ton to the bunk. A third wrecker will secure the trailer and the excavator will pull out the logs, freeing the bunk. Tangled up. If Dylan can get enough pressure pulled off with the logs, we're gonna try and pull the bunk out. Removing the bunk will free the logging truck at the bottom. But each log, weighing in at nearly 2,000 pounds and over 80 feet long, there it goes. Move it. can only be moved one at a time. I'm trying to take the pressure off the bunk right now, so by pulling the logs out, we're taking some pressure off. But with every log removed... There, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. The risk increases for the trailer on top. Over the cliff. It's, it's like a game of Tetris right now. What went in last needs to come out first. Yeah, perfect. Locked and loaded. If we don't get the timing right here. Everybody's clear, you're good. The bunk will actually puncture right through the bottom of the trailer. Yeah, there you go. It's the last thing we want. Watch yourself, I'm coming over. Whoa! Give an update on the highway, is it open? On the Coca Hala. Go closed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of Team Reliable's biggest wrecks of the season must be untangled. Whoa! One log at a time. It's like a game of Tetris right now. There's way too much pressure. We have to get that weight off so we can pull the bunk off of the truck. With one log to go. Yeah, no major jerks, nice and easy. Oh yeah! The bunk. You're good, you're clear, Dylan. Is finally free. The first step in untangling the pile. So we chain to that, uh, that D-ring, I'll just put the thing right up. Yeah, I can for it. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. We'll just put a chain, he's gonna pick it up. Managed to get our big steel fork out from underneath the trailer, that'll, uh, that'll save us a lot of pain. But the job is far from over. We definitely have to pull this apart one by one. Using the excavator, all right, watch yourself. They first work on leveling the teetering 53-foot trailer. If I pull the wrong truck or the wrong trailer at the wrong time, it can all come crashing down. Four. See what it does there? That's better, that's better. Yeah, perfect. With the trailer stabilized, they can remove the black tractor on the backside. The excavator hauls the unit out of the pile. Dylan's going to use the excavator to push the rest of the wreck off the road so we can open the live lane of traffic. Are we going to move here soon or what? Maybe do it on here. Clear the traffic out, and then we're gonna do a big lift. Just open up right now. She's open, we're rolling. Now 
Now that it's released, it's just gonna pull ahead. Okay, let's try. Let's see what happens. More on this. Hopefully we can separate the truck from the trailer and pull everything apart. With a line from the 35 ton. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. It's falling this way. See? There you go. The tractor is the next piece pulled free. Yeah. Look at that, boys. Yeah. Let's turn this truck around, get it out of the way. But the biggest challenge remains. We're going to work on lifting that trailer off the other truck. Removing the loaded trailer with unknown cargo. We'll use the 50 ton in the front to actually pick it off and swing it and put it back on the road. With the 50 ton rake to the front and the excavator holding the rear, they'll lift the trailer off the logging truck and back onto the road. Try this now. But not knowing how its 19,000 pounds of load is distributed comes with a big risk. We don't know what kind of load is in it, and we don't know if it's going to hold together. You're lifting it? Legs hooked on the plate. Whoa. There we go. This trailer's fully loaded. Whoop, 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 whoop. Well, it's suspended in midair, basically. Hey! Hey! Last thing that we want to have for this uh, trailer we can have. Run out of the room. You're in a bad spot. On the Coca-Cola. Legs hooked on the plate. The last piece. Oh. Of reliable towing's biggest wreck of the season. Oh. There we go. Hangs in the balance. I think everybody tonight is mind blown by what's happening. Coming. They're almost done. As the top trailer comes off can start to see the end of this recovery. Despite damage from the crash, the loaded trailer comes down in one piece. Came off nicely and Andy, Andy controlled that front end perfectly. This was a good one. Everybody pulled it off well. Seven hours after getting the call. Another truck on the hook. An epic battle is in the books for Team Reliable. All right. Thanks, Dylan. The Reliable team did awesome today. Yeah, buddy. We haven't seen accidents like this in quite a long time. Load off the highway. I feel, given any challenge, my team could do it. Yeah, long night. How do you do it without an excavator? <laughs> That's such a great feeling. Did a good job. There's one having issues. Stop going. Three hundred sixty kilometers east in the foothills of the Rockies. En route in his 40-ton LA rotator. I like to work, I'm gonna keep working. We're heading up to a trailer that's on the side of the road. Jamie Davis arrives. Wow, this is a mess. To an unusual sight. We're dealing with a trailer that's been zippered open by another truck. 
It's like the whole thing's torn in half. We'll be really lucky to even get this trailer into the yard with the load on. The tractor has already been taken away. Well, they got a lot of cleanup. Leaving its load of brand new washers and dryers. Some of the stuff is in the ditch and on the road. And we've got, you know, a lot of the cargo still inside. Joining Jamie today is logging truck driver turned crew member, wow, Rob Wall. Logger Rob's here giving me a hand. I'll try to swing over and grab some of these. I've pulled lots of trucks out of the ditch logging over the years. Big weight, eh? But we just do it ourselves. We don't get a tow truck in. It's Logger Rob's first winter on Jamie's team. You're just junk. Some machines can't be salvaged. The load is high-end washers and dryers. So we're just about there. And about 15 of those are smashed all down the highway. But most of the pricey load is still in the trailer. Rolling in to help. Try this first. Mitch Mahood. Every time I go out with Jamie, I always learn. That's one of the reasons I went to work for him. Well, it's going to be interesting. I mean, the structure of the trailer is compromised. The floor is broken. But saving the load. So we have to try and wrap it and strap it up and stuff so when it flexes, it doesn't break apart. Will require some roadside engineering. We're securing the load from coming out, you know, with these plywood pieces and some straps. <laughs> there it is. Okay. Reinforcing the trailer can save a costly unload. If we can bring it in loaded and everything stays intact, that'll save the customer a lot of money. Yeah, that should do it. But the trailer is far from ready to go. Really what we need to do now is support the trailer. You can see it has quite a bow in it. Using the skid steer. We're gonna try to bring the center of the trailer up now and uh, chain it up. Mitch will raise the trailer floor. A chain underneath this from the landing gear at the front to the axles on the rear end or the suspension. Okay, good. Will actually support the weight of the trailer. This wall cracked right here a little bit, but we'll get there with it. <sighs> Uh, that'll help keep that from that floor from sagging down. But the true test will be the 40 plus kilometer journey back to the yard. It's going to be a real tricky and slow drive back to town with it so that we don't lose what's left in the trailer. Okay. Hopefully we'll make it back into town with this thing, but she's a sagging wagon. I'm gonna follow Rob back to the yard in case he has any troubles whatsoever. I'm his backup. All eyes will be on logger Rob. Holy. To bring the high value load to safety. Rob is a logging guy, so he understands machinery and how to drive with wrecks on. What's going on here? Looks like he had a bad day. With the side ripped out, all the integrity of the trailer is gone. Every bump, I'm just cringing. One good bump, and the trailer would break right in two. We've got it secured as best we can, but you never know. We'll be really lucky if that thing makes it. What a man. Look out, everybody. On Highway 1. A little bit of carnage here. A valuable load in a makeshift trailer. Take it easy. 
is on a 42 kilometer journey before logger Rob can get it safely off the road. It's a nasty load, that's for sure. <laughs> He's all in one piece, so. There's a couple of big pumps in here. Lower down. Doing probably 25 miles an hour. We don't want this thing breaking in half. Not exactly a nice load. It's an engineering model, isn't it? I've got to really rely on Rob's skills. I'm just going to have to watch my speed and, and everything else in the road. As night falls, they finally make... Yeah, we're really lucky. ...the home stretch. We're just limping at home here. Oh, 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 oh. I'm very relieved that we have this thing in the yard now. It's all in one piece. There's no washer dryers on the road. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> we got the job done. Hey, play safe out here. Thank you, driver. Six hundred kilometers southwest. Always good. Aggressive towing's fifty-ton rotator is on the move. Good job here. We're going to be playing in a lot of residential. With operator Chris Mervin heading to a call. We got a customer that's rolled his crane truck in a construction site. But as Merv nears the site. Remember that time I told you it was going to be fight through here? <laughs> huh, huh. I wasn't lying. <laughs> no kidding. One nice thing is that we're not dealing with traffic on these residential streets. But on the other hand, it's a very narrow, tight, confined space. Oh, there she is. The crane truck rolled on its side in soft gravel, shutting down construction. Let's go take a look here. He was just unloading a lift of lumber. There's actually not that much damage to the cab. Trying to reach it into the back corner of the house. Ended up laying this crane on its side. This is gonna be a big problem right now, right? The first challenge? retracting the 70-foot boom. We just don't want it out, because if you were to come up, and if it spun, we would drag it back down the other side, right? Retracting the crane's boom, we avoid the danger of it rolling back over. Also on scene. We're just gonna pick it a little bit, try to take the pressure off. Junior operator. So I can suck her in. Jaden Dick. Two winters ago, Put it to a hook and then dig it back to there. Here, watch. Yeah. Jaden was mentored at Reliable Towing by Scott Bird. Or you could even go into the roller. Tell them how to lift off and everything? Yeah. Now. If we grab further on the back, we'll lift the back. He's working for Team Aggressive. It's not that. It's because the trailer doesn't weigh enough to overcome the pivot point, right? Uh, Merv's mentoring me now. He's always teaching me something new. All right, let's do this. Good. The 50-ton wrecker rotates into position so Jaden can rig a line more than the more than the more. to the 70-foot boom. Yeah. yeah. In order to retract this boom, we got to pick it up a little bit. All right. Lock and roll. You're in? Yeah, see if we can get that in. We gotta alleviate the pressures on the boom so it can retract itself back in. Just get it to this side of the lumber pile here. 
in the rollover, this thing actually damaged its hydraulic lines. They can only retract the boom halfway. There we go. There's no longer 60 feet of stick out. Now we're working with, you know, 30, 40 feet. And we'll worry about our outriggers. But to flip the crane truck. We'll support the truck. We'll try to suck that outrigger in and then set it all back down. Merv needs the truck's outriggers retracted. If you think about it, when that comes down, then it rolls only eight feet to my truck. Yeah. If I do it with the outrigger up, I'm 10 feet to my truck. Yeah. Yeah, so we don't want that. No. With the narrow space we're working with, we would have far less room to bring the truck over. With 17 tons of truck leaning on the outrigger, Yeah, work too hard. This train's heavier than me. They must now lift the truck. Beauty. Okay, go up. To relieve the pressure. Okay, buddy. Let's suck that outrigger in. See what happens. With the outrigger out of the way. And from here, auxiliary. Yeah. You kick it off. We'll come down to a block. And then we'll go to the axle. We'll chain out the axle on the truck. Yeah. And we can give her a little bit of a pull. Merv will try to straighten the truck. Yeah. Before attempting the flip. You know, it's fairly involved. We're going to make magic here, boys. Watch. That's a good shock load. Just tugging on different areas and seeing what we're gonna get. My back line to the nose. But to get the unit onto its wheels. Put one on the nose too for my belly line. Yeah. It should be free spooled. They need one more line. We're gonna run a low line from Merv's truck to the front of the crane truck. So we have more of a downwards pull. Good job, Jaden. And there's still a wild card, the partially retracted boom. Because it's higher center of gravity now, we're definitely gonna have to watch for and slow things down and be a little more careful. Now fully rigged. There we go. You guys ready? The 35,000 pound crane truck is ready to be rolled. <laughs> oh, Bertha. This boom is, uh, it's quite a bit of weight. He's fighting us. We're trying to roll it, but instead, I'm just pulling the whole truck towards mine. He's dragging the whole thing towards me. Running out of real estate here. He's fighting us. On a residential build site. Running out of real estate here. A partially extended crane truck refuses to roll over. He's dragging the whole thing towards me. That crane's sticking too far out the top still. So every time we try to convince it to roll, it just drags more and more towards me. With that much weight hanging off the top, that's not ideal in a rollover situation. We'll go around the chrome of the cylinder with a soft gray strap for a pick. That way we can still rotate. With the 12 and a half thousand pound crane. Just be careful. Unable to retract the rest of the way. And we'll just start getting real creative here. Merv will have to give it a helping hand. Got it? Can you get her in there? Mm -hmm. Repurposing lines from the rotator and soft straps. We don't want to end up damaging the crane or make it non-functional. Yee yee! Merv gently winches the boom closed. Let's kick that line off, run it over top. Lines are re-hooked for the flip. 
We're gonna add a couple lines. Uh, we wanna create a little bit more roll. Change her up a little bit. Put her up high. We add some lines to different places and uh, and see what we end up with. Okay, ready this time, boys? Yeah. I'm ready if you're ready. Now with a lower center of gravity. Well, we're about to find out. Running the low line is definitely handy to pull it downwards into the ground. Attention. Is focused on the $300,000 crane truck. Trailer can start coming? Yeah, she's over there. And under Merv's experienced hand. The rotator definitely makes 99% of wrecks easier and faster. The 17 ton unit. Finally touches down. Pick everything up, boy. All right, put this baby in the rest. <laughs> yeah, let's get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> but they're not out of the woods yet. We're dealing with a truck and trailer in a very narrow residential area. Slowly keep turning, yep. Keep going, keep turning. Yeah, crank her. Now we gotta get this thing back out onto the road. There you go. Now you're winning. Separate the two and then tow the separate units in different directions. Oh, damn. With a crane truck and its trailer separated, Jaden will haul the tractor back to the yard. Definitely feeling good. It was a tricky job, very close quarters, tight working spaces. Jaden's good. I mean, you ask that kid to do something, he listens, you give him a task, and he gets it done. See you later. I'll catch up to you. All in all, I think, you know, as a team, we did good. It's out of the way. They can continue construction now. That's good. Happy holidays, you guys. Be safe. Last trip before I shut down for Christmas. The next day. Must be a holiday, nobody's working. At the aggressive yard. Yeah, you just play with her. Get her get her just perfect here. Holiday spirit is in the air. We gotta have this perfect for Santa, Jaden. Otherwise he can't shoot the shoot the gap. That's bad news. No, he, he's gotta make it. As family and friends gear up for an annual tradition. So I'd nose right up there if you can. Jason Davis's daughters, Jazz. Yeah, pretty much just at the front there. And Tia are the organizers behind today's event. Today we are doing our fourth um, annual tow truck toy run. What's that, Al? The cause today is to give back to our local community toys and other necessities for people that just don't have the means to get it. Hopefully it's filled up, right? Yep. It makes me feel good just to see it and see what's been done. Yeah, beautiful. It's heartwarming to see at times of need, we all get together and do this. How are you? What do you want for Christmas? I want 500 robots. You want 500 robots? Hours before the event. This is awesome. <laughs> it's for the kids, right? It's for the kids. Colin McLean got into the festive mood. Okay. After you, Santa. Now, well, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas gentlemen. It's really great being Santa, walking around, being all jolly. It's a lot of fun. It's pretty exciting. A lot of people pull together to make this happen. With the bin filling up. Yeah. They're gonna be here any minute. 
Anticipation builds. Oh, the truck's clean. As a convoy travels. Talk about togetherness. To the aggressive yard. They take their trucks out of service for this day. Looking good. It's a huge sacrifice, but it's really, really important that we do this. We all work together. And uh, help out, kind of show our love. Oh, here they come. There's so many trucks out here. Pretty impressed. But this year, a special guest. Wow, look at that, eh? With a special story is catching a lot of attention. That's kind of cool. Already here they come. At the aggressive yard. We're going, AP. The annual toy truck toy run is on parade. <laughs> as the Abbotsford Police Department make their appearance. That's a sweet ride. With a one-of-a-kind vintage cruiser. It's a restoration project conceived by Staff Sergeant Chris Nightingale. The Abbotsford Police Foundation funded everything from the purchase of a car to countless volunteers that took part in restoring our vehicle. Modeled after a 1960s Matsky police vehicle, countless hours restored the vintage cruiser to its original glory. But the car is more than a piece of history. It's been given a special name, the Carroll Cruiser. Classic cars are always named after a female. And Chris came up with the idea that there's no better fitting person for this car to be named after than Carol Powell. Inspector Carol Powell served with the force for nearly 34 years. Carol was someone that was all about community. Carol lost her battle with cancer. But the cruiser is a loving tribute to her legacy. I have someone really special with me today. All right, let's go drop this off. <laughs> and that's Carol's daughter, Katie Powell. Oh, look, matching. I'll put them right in the middle. Brothers. The car was named after my mom. She was able to see the car about a month and a half before she passed away. And seeing her face, seeing her signature and her picture in the car, like, it was such a magical moment. Across the yard, at their first toy run, MSA shows off their new heavy. It's got a hell of a reach, eh? Yeah, 144. It's a good thing to get everybody together and get to know each other. That's a big stick. Yeah, eh? He's boys. <laughs> As the event comes to a close. It's a really rewarding feeling seeing that trailer fall. This is going to put a smile on some kids' faces. At the end of the day, it's, it's just a win-win. To the north. Happy holidays, everybody. In the town of Merritt. Christmas party downtown. Reliable's Big Iron is looking festive. Nice light show. Christmas parade is always a great time. The drivers love it. I'm really proud of them because it brings out the spirit in everybody and it's just a great feeling. It's a very special time of the year for us. Merry Christmas, brother. In hope, Jamie's made it home 
for the holidays. It's nice to be back home. The one thing about the holidays, it's usually the busy season. Here somewhere? Yeah. Like right, right there. You feel yourself wanting to take that time off a little more. It looks nice. I like this one. This is a nice tree this year. Ah, oh, there we go. You know, that work-life balance becomes more important to you. Yeah, looks good. That, that looks like wiring green. <laughs> oh, no. How did that get on a tree? <laughs> There's a lot of red. Yeah, we'll get lots uh -huh. of red. Mm hmm well, have a seat. Good. Sounds good. Enjoy the fire. Yeah. For me, just that Christmas Eve sitting by the fire, you know, relaxing. This is the best part about Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Right here. Just relaxation. By the fire. Zoning out a little bit is pretty cool. Well, cheers. Cheers. It's been a good year, and I think we're in for an even better year. Really? I do. Wow. Keep doing what we're doing. It's working. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And to all a good night. And for that. Next time on Highway to Hell. All kinds of mess ahead here. Team Reliable ah. is all twisted up. Hang on, John. Set her down, bud. A wreck near a rail line. Up she goes tilts towards disaster. I don't trust this angle. And an odd-shaped job. Here we go, boys. As Al in a tight spot. Okay, hold on. 